It's exactly 10.30, TRE, Talk Radio Europe. Now, the uh, COVID pandemic and all that's sprung from it has affected many people financially and work-wise, and none of those may be so obvious as uh, musicians, because basically all of the venues that musicians would ordinarily play in have all closed down, <laughs> as simple as that. So even if they wanted to uh, do their work, there is nowhere to do that work, be that uh, concert venues, be that theatres, be that uh, bars who have had to close early and therefore the kind of music in the evening. We've got some bars that have closed completely, of course, now here in Spain. And all of that means that those musicians can't work. Um, and one could say, well, OK, but there's government help available. Not necessarily. Let's find out a little more about this and a new initiative uh, launched by Robert Emery uh, called Get Musicians Working. And Robert joins us now. Morning, Robert. Good morning, Bill. How are you? Not bad. As a musician myself, um, you know, this is something which I've been, uh, you know, thinking about all this time. And it's just a tragedy to see the amount of incredibly talented people uh, who have been effectively dumped out of work uh, with, with no support. Yeah, I mean, it, it's shocking. Uh, and there's no other word for it, really. I mean, the last performance I did was at the very beginning of March last year, so 10 months ago. And uh, from a music point of view, I've not earned a single penny um, since then. And I'm, and I'm not the only one. You know, 34% of professional musicians uh, are considering abandoning their career for good because they can't hack it anymore. They can no longer afford to be a musician. And that's a, that's a crazy statement to make, though, isn't yeah. it, if you think about it? I mean, but, you know, 33% of musicians here in the UK haven't been applicable for any of the government support available. Yeah. So there, there's a third of all musicians who are sitting there who haven't been able to earn a single penny since last March. Um, and, you know, I'm a conductor. Yeah. I wave my arms around for a living. That's right. what I do. And, and um, you know, if I'm sitting in my front room uh, waving my arms around pretending to conduct and I've got nobody to conduct, I'm just classed as a madman. So, uh. so there's not much I can do from home. So I thought, you know what, instead of, of, of just waving my arms around to nobody, I may as well at least try and help out, you know, the thousands of people who I've worked with over the years who are, who are struggling. So I set up getmusiciansworking.org, uh, which is a registered charity to try and give support and give financial support and grants to to the struggling musicians who are unable to work because of the pandemic. Well, it sounds like a good uh, idea to me. Let, we'll give some more detail on, on exactly how it works, but let's just kind of um, have a look at, at what exactly has been going on here. We're not talking uh, people here who, you know, have got a guitar for Christmas and they've done out a couple of gigs in their local bar. Of course, those people are maybe affected as well, but we're talking people here whose entire being has been music. They've done it. Uh, they've, they, yeah. uh, if you particularly take the, let's just say, a cellist or a, a flautist or a, a timpanist, or whatever, uh, or, uh, you know, a, a guitarist or a bass player or a drummer who've been doing it all of their lives and it's all they've known. And, and the point about music is it's in your blood, you know. It's, it's not something that necessarily you just decide to do on a whim. It's in you. Oh, it's so refreshing to hear somebody who understands that. <laughs> you know, I... I, I, I've done a fair few of these interviews now and, and spoken to lots of people and, and the, the usual sort of retort is, well, why don't you just go and get another job? Oh. Um, and, and it's really difficult to explain to people who are not in, in the music industry. You know, I, I started playing the piano when I was seven. Yep. And when I was nine, I wrote a letter saying I'm going to be a professional musician. Yeah. And from the age of nine to my age now, which I'm not going to tell you, um, <laughs> I, all I have ever done is make music. It's all I've ever wanted to do. It's what I'm good at. It's what I was put on this earth for. Yeah. And, and the notion of just sort of ignoring that and flipping and going to, to do some other job is, is just crazy. I've trained my whole life for this. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and the retort of just go and get another job is, is especially difficult right now. I mean, 47% of musicians have tried to get other work. Yeah. But everybody conveniently forgets there is no other work available. <laughs> exactly. That's the opposite. Yes. <laughs> We're losing jobs left, right and centre. So, you know, it's not like 
It's not like there's a thousand and one jobs that we can go into straight away. Um, well, listeners to the show will know that my blood boiled over when that government uh, um, uh, poster went up that we suggested that we should all go and retrain in cyber, yeah. you know. I, I, I was so angry about that. Uh, and I, um, I actually did the government survey. They put up a website where they said, um, um, we can help you retrain, uh, answer these questions, and uh, we will let you know what you'd be suitable as, you know. So I've been a musician all my life I've been a broadcaster all my life those are my two skills I went through all the questions and at the end it suggested that I retrain as a boxer (laughs) (laughs) I love that I did the same thing Bill I did the same thing and I should be a model (laughs) oh fantastic fantastic Uh, How they come up with right. these things? Absolutely. I know it's crazy, it? Absolutely. And of course, you know, you're talking re- about musicians here. The title of the, of the thing is Get Musicians Working. But there's a whole other infrastructure behind that, particularly when you start looking at bigger gigs and theatre performances and all the rest of it. There's thousands of people behind the scenes who have also been dumped on the scrap heap. Yeah, I mean, musicians are not, not the only ones, um, you know, but me being a muso is, is, is where my passion lies, so that's what I can champion. But, you know, I work a lot in theatre. Um, I, I, I've been doing the Bad Out of Hell musical for, for, for years now and, um, and and getting that up and running worldwide and working with oh, Meatloaf directly. Great. And it's one of the things, yeah, it's a fantastic, fantastic show. And we were supposed to be going to America two days before the lockdown happened in the first, uh, in the first lockdown. So the whole thing was, was postponed. Um, but you know, the, 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 the people on stage, the people backstage, um, we're all in the same boat. You know, the theaters have been, this is the problem bill that people have to try and understand is that almost every other industry has been able to get back to work somehow. Mm-hmm. Even if you're a pub or a restaurant and, and you've been, closed for having people come inside your building. If you can, you've been able to turn it into a takeaway. Um, Mm. If you're an office worker, you've been able to work from home. If you're a building site contractor, you've been able to go out to your building site, even in lockdown. So almost every industry has been able to work in some way, shape or form. But the people who work in theatres, the people who work in concert halls, the people who do recording sessions for your favourite Netflix TV series or your favourite film... All of these venues have been closed since last March. So it's not that we don't want to go in, we'd love to go in, but the venues have been closed. And if the venues are closed, there's no performance. And if there's no performance, there's no income. And yeah. that's the crux of it. We haven't actually been allowed to work now for 10 months. And we are one of the only industries that are in that position, which is why it's, it's so dire. I mean, you know, I have a very good friend of mine who said, you know, why should I support musicians? I mean, you know, they, <laughs> they earn a good living. What, 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 why should I do that? I said, well, a couple of things here. Do they earn a good living? Some of us do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and the people who are right at the top of the cream of the crop have done seriously well for themselves. Yeah. But the normal rank and farm musician who goes out to a gig, I tell you, if you're living, I don't know, in London and you've got a concert in Manchester, yeah. you spend your whole day going up to Manchester, doing a three-hour rehearsal, waiting around for a couple of hours, doing a three-hour concert, travelling back for three hours. Yeah. That whole day, you'll be paid less on an hourly basis than minimum wage here in the UK. Yeah, it's absolutely right. It's unfortunate that the perception of of music is what people see and hear on the TV and on the radio, and the uh, and the public perception is because of the way that the industry has, as I unfortunately, um, done this over the years. And I, you know, I'm angry about that as well. It's their own fault, frankly, but we're the ones who're suffering. That everybody's a multimillionaire, and that's just like saying mm-hmm. everybody who drives a car is Lewis Hamilton. No, of course <laughs> there are Lewis Hamiltons in the world, but they're not all yeah. Lewis Hamilton. Uh, and you are right that the people who are, you know, are playing down your local pub um, are earning next to nothing. And what's happened now is, and I know this has happened here in Spain because I've seen it happen uh, with my partner. And 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 you know, I, I do the odd gig here and there, not not not, not these days that many. But people are going out for peanuts now uh, because they'll just take any money they can. And what that basically means is that if and when this all goes back to normal, they'll stay being paid peanuts. So it's actually made it worse. <laughs> Yeah. It's taken years to get to just to get to a cashew nut, you know. And now we're back to peanuts. Um, <laughs> so it's it, there's a whole world of pain here, and 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 I think it's worth saying, you know, that if you imagined a world without music in any shape or form, it would be a very sad place to live in. 
Yeah, the, the problem is, Bill, music is everywhere. I mean, I say the problem is not a problem. It's great thing that music yeah. is everywhere. But 99% of the music you hear in your ears is, is free to you. Yeah. you. You don't have to pay for it. And so it, it immediately sort of devalues the proposition that you're listening to. So if you're listening to a, a pop song on the radio or you've got Spotify on or, or there's a, a piece of music on a television program or in a film or whatever, you, you, you're probably not paying for that. So your, your instant reaction isn't to remember that somebody somewhere has probably spent a fortune producing that track. And there's a whole host of musicians and producers who have been paid to do it. Yep. And so it's, it's, it's quite tricky to remember that all the time. I don't expect everybody to remember it, but what you must remember is that we are in this position where if we've not been allowed to work, then the music dries up. And if you don't have music then you try watching a television program without music. It's yeah. hilarious. If, uh, there's a great clip on, on YouTube, which I would advise everybody to go and look at. And it's a, it's, a, it's a clip from Star Wars. And they've managed to edit out all the music <laughs> from it. It's about a seven-minute long clip. And it's hilarious. It, it looks amateur. It sounds amateur. It just, it's so uh, funny. fake because the music is the thing that creates the drama and the tension. So without music, you don't have... You don't have theatre, you don't have musicals, you don't have opera, you don't have ballet, you don't have your concerts, your symphony concerts, you don't have your arena shows, you don't have Netflix, uh, you don't have your favourite television sh stations, you don't have your favourite radio stations. It's just the whole entertainment world just disappears. And, and I was speaking to a friend who said, do you know what, Robert, music for me has been a source of emotional medicine. Exactly. I've been self-isolating now for a long time. And without music, I would have gone completely nutty. Yeah. And, and, and she said, genuinely, I'm not sure I would be here because I would have been so depressed and so upset if I hadn't got music to keep me going. And so she said it, it may not be as important as curing cancer mm. or solving global warming. But for me personally, it is important as that because it has been my emotional medicine. I think that's that absolutely really spot on. Spot on. on. Uh, uh, the other, the, the flip side of this coin is that the perception is that, okay, well, musicians have lost all of their, uh, their touring and their revenue from gigs. Well, that doesn't matter because they're multimillionaires based on um, uh, the, being on Spotify and YouTube and look at all those millions and millions of times. Well, only yesterday uh, there was a big story on uh, uh, on Gary Newman, who had um, uh, just received his uh, his uh, payment um, from the Performing Rights Society for some uh, a hit of his, I can't remember which, which which was then that had been streamed a million times, and he got thirty seven quid. That wouldn't yeah. even buy him a meal out. And, and people's perception is that it's it's the old days where people used to earn loads of money, and they did. There's no doubt about it. People were well off back in the good old days, but not. Yeah. Anymore, so not only now has the has the 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 revenue from touring been obliterated, the revenue from be, hearing your records played has been obliterated, and so it's gone. Yeah, uh, he, I mean he's not the only one. I mean he's lucky to get thirty seven quid. I've got a <laughs> trap. <laughs> uh, I mean he should go out and buy me a meal. I, I've, got a, I've got a trap on on Spotify which is almost a million. We're at like nine hundred and twenty five thousand or something. And um, and so far, it's bought me thirteen pounds seventy six pence. There you go. Um, I, I'm going to be a multimillionaire one day, Bill. I can just feel it. Oh, in my bones. I'll tell <laughs> you. I'll tell you. Um, and of course, we've now got. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm not. I'm not on a on a soapbox here, but it's important to, to to talk about this stuff. That Brexit has now given musicians an extraordinarily big problem now, because effectively, uh, the EU offered a deal to the United Kingdom for touring musicians, uh, so they didn't have loads of uh, visa and fees and paperwork and all the rest of it, and the UK government turned the deal down. So now we've got the situation where bands, orchestras and all the rest of it can't afford to tour in the EU if and when this all comes back again. Yeah, I mean, the, the Brexit thing is, is, a, is, a, is a tricky thing to navigate, um, particularly because all the, all the different countries in the EU have different rules. Yeah. Um, so... Um, do you know what? I, I'm I'm going to be an eternal optimist on this one, Bill. <laughs> and I'm going to say that um, as much as it looks horrendous right now, I think there will be a way to sort this out. And I think within a couple of years, it will just 
feel totally normal and totally natural, and there'll be a way to make this work. Well, let's hope so. With, no, I hope so. I was, I was having a phone call with a, a member of parliament two days ago on this subject, and he unequivocally said to me that the, the, the story that has leaked, that the EU offered um, the British parliament a deal and they turned it down, he said that's wholly wrong, wholly incorrect, mm-hmm. that did not happen. Right. Um, and, and, uh, and he completely begs to differ, and he says that they're still in talks to try and find a way to, to make touring musicians um, tour easier in the EU. Wow. Um, that's, that's from the horse's mouth. That's from an, uh, an MP who I spoke with. Yeah. Now, I don't know. There's two sides to every story and there's no smoke without fire and all those fantastic phrases. But <laughs> I, I just think music is such an important part of our, our society and our industry. Do, do you know how much it earned in 2019, Bill? Have you got any idea in the UK? No, I don't know the number. 5.8 billion pounds mm. now if you put that next to fishing <laughs> and we know how how the fishery was such a divisive issue on, yeah. on brexit yeah? yeah fishing 446 million you're right right so so music is a, a, an industry which is 10 times bigger than the fishing industry and then if you go into the arts in general yeah so that covers all arts you're talking about 101 billion pounds it's one of the biggest industries um, uh, as well that we export across Europe. So I just don't believe that that there isn't a solution to be had here. I'm going to be an eternal optimist and say that if we speak in six months' time, we'll be we'll be sorted on this. Well, let's hope so. It did produce one of the funniest memes I've seen, uh, which was uh, an articulated lorry with uh, the band's equipment in it stopped at a border control somewhere, and they said, uh, uh, where's your paperwork, sir? And they said, it's in the two lorries behind me. <laughs> which I thought was wonderful so so something more positive and let's talk about Get Musicians Working how does it work Uh, where does the money go and who's involved in it in terms of getting paid out yeah uh, it's so simple. We, we we earn money from the general public. We ask you very kindly to go to getmusiciansworking.org and just give us a fiver if that's all you can afford, two quid if that's all you can afford, 50 quid, whatever you want. If you value music in any way, shape or form, and if you enjoy it, if you could support musicians right this second who are uh, struggling, then it would be enormously beneficial. And then all of that money goes directly to to the musicians who apply to us for grants. And they're I small see. grants, um, and uh, they're not there as income support. And, and I should say really clearly, musicians, we're hardworking people in general. We're not lazy. We have to go and hustle a lot. Mm. And so they said to me, they don't want just a grant. They want to give something back. And so we've set up something. I've set up a website called Ted's List, right. which is ted's-list.com. And this is going to be the world central resource source of information for anything related to a musical instrument. Ah. So if you want to know what is the difference between a violin and a viola, mm-hmm. or if you want to know what's the best drum kit to buy a seven-year-old, or should I buy electronic drums or acoustic drums, or how old do I have to be until I can play the oboe, it doesn't really matter what the question is, it doesn't matter what the instrument is, you can go on to ted-list.com and find an answer written by a professional musician. Ah. And the way that list links to the scheme is that everybody who is receiving a grant from getmusiciansworking.org is really kindly donating their time to creating some content for the TED's List website. And the idea with this is that we help the musicians of tomorrow by giving them amazing, reliable, factual information which they can trust by a world-class professional. So it's, you know, they are, the musicians that have been granted are given back to society and they're given back to the music industry. And it's a, it's a bit of a nice sort of circle of life, this, you know, the, 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 the public give to the getmusiciansworking.org. We give that money to the musician. The musician creates content for Ted's List website, and hopefully the Ted's List website will inspire the musician of tomorrow. Fantastic. And some of these grants that have been given out, it's a very varied selection of, 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 uh, of musicians, saxophonists, French horns, trombones, tubers, percussion, guitar players, bass players, drummers, uh, yeah. all kinds of, of people. And so they are the people who've applied then um, to you for a grant, and you then yeah. put them on the list and, and, then, and then give the money out. Egg. 
Exactly, exactly. And, and and we've got a list as long as my arm of, of people who are needing grants, and mm. unfortunately we can't fulfill, fulfill, it, fulfill it all at the moment. You know, we, we're desperately trying to raise more money so we can fulfill it all. Um, and, and you know, as soon as the money comes into us from the public, it goes straight out to a musician. We've got to queue it up. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, so that's the system. That's, that's the charity, getmusiciansworking.org. And if anybody is, is kind enough and generous enough to, to help the musicians right now, what it'll do is make sure that when this whole horrible pandemic is over, that when you want to go to a concert hall or you want to go to a pub or you want to go to an arena or you want to go to the theatre, it'll ensure that we've still got the professional musicians available to do that. And, and so we can entertain for you all. Absolutely brilliant. Where do people go to find out uh, in more information and, more importantly, donate? So uh, just uh, get musiciansworking.org. Okay. Go straight to there to find out more information. There's a whole host of info on there for the musicians we've helped through to myself and why I've set up the, the charity um, and also, crucially, the donation page. And if they need any assistance with musical instruments or musical advice on education, that's Ted's List website, which is ted-list. Com. Fantastic. Well, it's been a pleasure to talk to you today. But before you go, Robert, I've got to ask you, there's not there's not many on my bucket list of people who I've not interviewed over the years that I'd love to interview. It really is a very short list, but one of them is Meatloaf. <laughs> he must uh, be an absolute hoot to work with. Do, do you know what? He's a... He's a gentleman. He's, yeah. a, he's a real gentle giant. It's bizarre. You, 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 you look at the old images of him back in the, the eight, 70s and 80s and you think, oh, he's going to be some sort of crazy, <laughs> narcissistic <laughs> a madman. Um, and that's kind of how I entered the room. And I came out of the room thinking, he's just a gentle giant. He's, wow. a, he's a cuddly polar bear and you want to you hug him. He's a lovely, lovely bloke to work with. And, oh. um, and really easy going as well, which is really nice. And to play those, uh, to, 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 to get involved with that, that, those musical arrangements yeah. that, you know, that yeah. Jim Steinman did from Bat Out of Hell, my goodness yeah. me. Yeah. Well, we were, we, you know, this is a, a project from Jim directly, so I worked quite closely with him. And, um, and I must say, you know, Jim is, uh, he's a very unusual chap. Um, <laughs> How very least. tactfully put! <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, I've got some amazing stories about him, which I, I shouldn't say. If I was, but you know, he, he he's a real special guy, and and he's um, he's a, uh, he's a genius. That's, yeah, that's no the doubt best about it. Him. You know, he he's bonkers, but he's a genius with it. Yeah. And uh, he's a very unusual human being. That's yeah. just wonderful. <laughs> I have interviewed Jim Stein and I concur with the, with the word unusual. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, he's got an opera box in his in his house. <sighs> he's, he's sort of his main living room has got like a balcony um, around the edge of it, and he built an opera box in the corner, and he's he's painted the ceiling to be a, a night sky because he's he's nocturnal. He he. <sighs> He basically, he keeps awake all night and then he sleeps all day. He's a bit like a vampire. Goodness um, me. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's completely batty. Um, but he's great. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's superb. Wonderful. Well, we could probably talk stories all day. I could tell you the one yeah. about the very famous record producer and songwriter who, uh, when I went to meet him, was sitting in a throne facing the opposite direction wearing a crown and refu yeah. refused to get out of the chair and made me go round the other side to have a conversation with him while he sat regally in his... His throne. <laughs> yeah, there, there are some strange people around. Uh, uh, we, uh, we did a FaceTime with, well, we did a Zoom call with, with Jim on the first day of Battle oh. House rehearsals, and he was, he was wearing a Darth Vader mask. Um, and they took it off. <laughs> and he had, a, he had a gigantic platter of fruit straight in front of him. It must have been about 200 pieces of fruit. Oh. And that's all we saw. It's, it's, it's him sitting in a chair in a Darth Vader mask with fruit. But but he's a, he's a living legend. Absolutely um, agreed. Know, he's, he's, Fantastic. So, yeah. What a pleasure it's been to talk to you, Robert. Um, Get Musicians that's Working cool. is the, what you need to look for. Um, uh, we'll no doubt catch up with you again and see how it's gone in, in a few months' time. That'd be a good thing to do. Brilliant. Good man. Thank you very all right. much. Everybody. All the best. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is TRE.